Hey there, rednecks, preppies, redneck preppies. It's me, the redneck preppy. How are you doing today? Great? Good. If you're a shooter of, and particularly a reloader for ammunition out of an M1 Garin, you've probably heard or believe that there is a near biblical injunction against firing any bullets out of that rifle that aren't 150 grains in weight. Now, why that belief exists is pretty obvious. The ammunition that the United States military fed their M1 Garins was, generally speaking, 150 grains in weight for the bullet. Well, kind of. We'll get into that. Uh, let's go back in history first, though. Back in 1906, the U.S. military introduced the 30-06 round, a uh, cartridge ball caliber 30 model of 1906, a military nomenclature, or M1906 round for the rest of us, to replace the very short-lived 30-03 cartridge that the M1903 Springfield had initially been developed for. That original military version of the 30-06 cartridge had a Spitzer bullet that weighed 150 rounds. Now, for various reasons that are beyond the scope of this video, the U.S. Ordnance Corps wasn't quite happy with various aspects of the original version of the cartridge, so in 1926, they introduced a new one that is commonly referred to as 30 cal M1 ball. This new and improved version of the 30-06 round featured, among other things, a 174-grain bullet. Finally, in 1938, again for reasons that don't really add too much to this video, so I won't get into them, the military decided they needed a yet another change to the cartridge and came up with cartridge caliber 30 ball M2, a round that featured a 152-grain bullet. Now that's the broad strokes of the history of the ammunition itself. Believe me, there is a long list of the different types of 30-odd six that the United States military has used over the years, most of them specialized rounds. Now, if you paid attention to the dates that I mentioned, you probably noticed that the rifle that was in service during the first two versions of that round was the M1903 Springfield. Now, by the time the M1 Garin was introduced in 1936, in limited numbers, mind you, the standard round was the M2 ball ammunition with its 152 grain bullet. So if you ever hear that M2 ball and the Garin were designed in concert for each other, as this video from a few years back argued, the idea is the M1 was designed around a very specific single cartridge loading, the M2 ball. Well, no. Obviously, the M1 Garand was already in the hands of U.S. servicemen before the M2 round even started rolling off the line in Lake City. At any rate, because the M1 Garand and M2 Ball both arrived within relatively close together of each other on the timeline, there are those who argue that the only ammunition you should be using to avoid damaging your rifle is the one that replicates what was fed to it in World War II. And by that, they typically mean a round with a 150 grain bullet. Well, yes and no. If someone were to argue to me that the M2 ball was the mother's milk of their M1 Garand, I wouldn't argue the point too much. If they were to argue that the only bullet that comes out of that barrel should be 150 grain, or 152 grain if you want to be anal about it, to shoot safely, I'm actually going to fight that point. The reason is that the size of the bullet in 30-06 ammunition that can damage the operating rod, the follower rod, or some other aspect of the gas system doesn't actually matter. Or to be more accurate, it's only one variable in a cartridge that could damage your rifle. According to the Civilian Marksmanship Program in April 2021, the CMP advises not to use 30-06 ammunition N1 Garands, 1903s, and 1903 A3s that is loaded beyond 50,000 cup and has a bullet weight of more than 172 to 174 grains. These rifles are at least 70 years old and were not designed for max loads and super heavy bullets. Now please note that there is a big word here and it's AND. Ammunition that is loaded beyond 50,000 copper units of pressure, or 60,190 PSI chamber pressure, and a bullet weight of more than 172 to 174 grain. 
those two are tied together. There's a lot of magic in that first sentence because it not only neatly dismisses any nonsense about using anything more than 150 grain bullets, but that any ammunition, even commercial ammunition, that fits into this criteria is fine to shoot out of your M1 Garand according to the CMP. Now, in case you don't trust the CMP, for some reason, and anything other than an M2 ball and it's 152 grain bullet wasn't acceptable in your M1 Garand, you'll need to contact Hodgson and tell them to remove a lot of tested loads from their website. As you can see from their bullet selection for ammunition, specifically for the M1 Garand, it ranges from the bog standard 150 grain bullet that most people use, all the way up to 180 grains. Now before you start shouting about bullets over the 172 to 174 grain advice from the CMP, remember it's chamber pressure and bullet weight. The load data on Hodgson's website shows a max load pressure of just over 44,000 cup with 180 grain bullets over BLC2. Still need more proof? Would you be surprised to learn that the US military actually issued 30-06 ammunition with heavier bullets? M2 armor piercing ammunition, for example, is listed in FM 23-5, a 1965 field manual for the M1 Garand, as approved for use. That round has a 164 grain bullet. M72 match ammunition comes in with a 173 grain bullet. Now, all that said, I'm going to be honest enough to admit that not everyone agrees with the CMP's prescription of chamber pressure and bullet weight. There are some pretty knowledgeable people out there who argue that using a chamber pressure as a variable is a mistake because the rifle's chamber can handle pressures far in excess of 60,000 PSI. They argue that instead of chamber pressure, you should be considering gas port pressure, since that's the start of the chain that ends up in your operating rod or your follow rod being damaged. Now, gas port pressure is a deep rabbit hole to go down, and it's not the focus of this video. So there is a link in the description below to an excellent article by Garand Gear, who did a mountain of testing for both military and commercial loads. Now, granted, their uh, arguments are predicated upon you needing a gas plug for your M1 Garin that can adapt to different gas port pressures. So you might consider them biased. At the end of the day, you, if you are still nervous about firing anything other than M2 ball or ammunition that replicates it, you know, you can stick with it and no one is going to laugh at you. That said, if you don't reload commercial ammunition made for the Garand is expensive. If you want to expand your ammo options, you can also look at that aftermarket adjustable gas plug I just mentioned for your rifle that allows you basically to fire any ammunition. That solution answers those who believe that the gas port pressure is the most important variable. Here are some important points though, regardless of what you do, but especially if you fire ammo hotter than M2 ball. Keep your ammunition at or below the CMP guidelines for pressure and bullet weight. Make sure the spring for your op rod is up to spec. That's really important. And make sure that your prop or rifle is properly greased and lubricated. Do these things and I wager that you're going to be all right. Now, as for myself, when I hand load ammunition for my M1 Garand, I actually do use 150 grain bullets. But that's because I'm a stickler for historical accuracy. I try and replicate the original round that my military rifles fired. That said, I'd have no problem with using heavier bullets in my rifle. Regardless of what you may have gotten from this video though, I hope that the next time you hear someone tell you that you must use 150 grain bullets or your rifle will detonate in a small blast, you'll know they're wrong. At any rate, I hope you found today's video to be at least vaguely entertaining and marginally informative. As always, I hope you get out there and enjoy that M1 Garin, regardless of what kind of safe ammunition you put through it. Take care, and bye-bye.